Hey everyone, this is Peter from the Firebase team. In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement Google Sign-In using Firebase Auth in your app on iOS. This video assumes that you know the basics about Firebase Auth already. If you'd like a little refresher, I recommend you watch my introductory video first and then come back here. At the end of this video, you will know how Google Sign-In works, how to handle the sign-in flow in your iOS app, and how to sign out again. Let's get started. I've created a sample app to demonstrate how you can implement Google Sign-In in your app. The code is available in this GitHub repository. There is a starter project you can use if you want to follow along. But if you just want to see the final result, or if you get stuck, there is also a folder with the final finished state. The app allows users to choose their favorite number and then stores it locally in user defaults. This is great for now, but I like to implement a feature that allows users to retrieve their favorite number on all their other devices or share it with their best friends. Cloud Firestore sounds like a great tool to implement this kind of data storage. But before I can store my users' favorite numbers in Cloud Firestore, I need to get hold of some unique identifier that I can use to tell all those favorite numbers apart and know exactly which user has which favorite number. Firebase Authentication provides access to such an identifier. Each user has a unique identifier called the UID. Whenever a person signs up to your app using Firebase Authentication, their newly created user account gets an identifier that is unique to your Firebase project. Before we can use Firebase Authentication, we need to add the Firebase SDK to our app. I've already done this for my sample app, but if you'd like to know how I did that, check out this other video in which I walk you through the steps of setting up a Firebase project using Swift Package Manager. The next step is to add the Firebase Auth library to all the targets in which I want to use Firebase Authentication. However, since I already did this in the previous video about Firebase Auth, I don't need to do this again. To allow users to sign into my app with Google Sign-In, I need to add the Google Sign-In SDK. The Google Sign-In SDK is not part of the Firebase SDK. It's a separate download, just like other authentication providers, such as Facebook. So before I can use it, I need to add the Google Sign-In SDK to my Xcode project using Swift Package Manager. Let me open the Add Packages dialog and then paste the URL of the Google Sign-In SDK into the search field. After a short moment, I can see the readme of the package. The Google Sign-In SDK team has just released a new major version of the SDK, which makes configuring the SDK easier than before. So let's choose Up to Next Beta Version and enter the version number of the latest release. I'll click on Add Package, and Xcode will go and fetch the package information by downloading the package file. Once that's done, I can select both the Google Sign-In and Google Sign-In Swift library and then click on the Add Package button to add them to my Xcode project. There is one more step we need to complete in Xcode before we can activate Google Sign-In in the Firebase console, and this is to add the reverse client ID to the list of URL schemes. You can find the reverse client ID in the Google Services info.plist file. Copy it, and then go back into your target configuration. Navigate to the Info tab, expand the URL type section. Then tap the plus button to create a new URL type and paste the reversed client ID in the URL schemes field. Leave all the other fields untouched. To use Firebase authentication, we need to activate it in the Firebase console. But as you can see, I already did this for my project, so no need to do it again. However, I do need to enable Google Sign-In in the list of authentication providers for my app. You can enable and use as many authentication providers in your app as you like. By doing so, you enable users to sign in using their preferred authentication mechanism. Some users might prefer signing in with email and password, while others might prefer Google Sign-In or Sign-In with Apple, as this gives them this really smooth one-tap login experience. This also allows you to let users link multiple sign-in mechanisms. For example, if your users signed in using email and password, but they later would like to connect their Google account to your app, that's possible if you implement account linking. This is something we will look at in one of the next videos. In this video, though, 
I want to show you how to implement Google Sign-In. So let me go ahead and activate the Google Sign-In Authentication Provider. One thing you need to keep in mind, if you use any OAuth-based authentication mechanism, such as Google Sign-In or a Facebook login, Apple's App Store review guidelines require you to also implement Sign-In with Apple. There are some exceptions to this rule, so I recommend you check out the current version of the App Store review guidelines to be on the safe side. By the way, if you forget to enable a provider, Firebase Auth will throw an error message when you try to sign in. That's one of the reasons why you want to implement some error handling in your app. It makes it a lot easier to figure out what's wrong when things aren't working as expected. To make development easier, I recommend using the Firebase emulator. You can think of the Firebase emulator suite as your own personal instance of Firebase running on your local development machine. Since everything runs locally, you don't run the risk of messing up your production data, and you also avoid stepping on each other's toes when you're sharing a development project with your teammates. Another benefit is that the emulator suite also works when you're offline or on a slow network. I've already installed and configured the Firebase emulator suite in the previous video, so feel free to check this out if you'd like to see how to do this for yourself. I'll start the emulator using the following command line. This tells the emulator to persist any user accounts we create and later restore them the next time I run the same command. In fact, I've previously created a user account, and as you can see, the emulator has restored this user from disk. This saves quite a bit of time, especially if you have more than just a few test accounts. To connect your app to the emulator suite, add the following code to your Firebase setup code. Now, with all this preliminary work out of the way, I can start implementing Google Sign-In in my app. The first thing I want to do is add a Google Sign-In button to my login view. The Google Sign-In SDK contains a Sign-In button, but I want more control so I will add a custom Swift UI button to my view. Let's take a look. So basically, it is a Swift UI button. And inside the label closure, I use a text view to display the text, sign in with Google. To make it look like a real button, I set the button style to bordered. And I also set the foreground color of the text, depending on whether we're in dark or light mode. For the colorful G logo, I put an image view in the background of the text view and make sure it is aligned to the left side of the text view. The logo should have a width of 30 and be aligned in the center of its frame. Now, this is starting to look quite nice, but the logo and the text overlap in an unsightly way, so I will use the frame view modifier to tell the label to use all the available space. In SwiftUI, the order of the view modifiers matter, so it is really important to apply the frame modifier before the background. Otherwise, the logo will not be pushed out to the left edge. And finally, I will add some vertical padding to the text to make sure the button has the same height as the login button just above. When the user taps on the button, I will call the sign in with Google function, which will forward the call to the view model to sign the user in using Google. But before we can implement this function, let's talk about how the process of signing in a user to Firebase works when using an OAuth provider. There are three main steps to this process. First, the user has to sign in to the OAuth provider, and you will be using the provider's SDK or their endpoint to handle this step. If the user signed in successfully, you will receive an ID token for this user. Take this ID token and any additional information that might be required and create a credential object using one of Firebase's OAuth providers. There is a generic OAuth provider, but also some specialized ones, like the one for Google Sign-In. And finally, use this credential object to sign in to Firebase and exchange the provider's ID token for a Firebase ID token. But before we can actually call the Google Sign-in SDK, we need to configure it using your app's OAuth client ID. There are two ways to do this, one using your project's target properties and the other one using the GID configuration object. 
Remember the updated configuration flow I told you about? Well, for using this first way to configure the Google Sign-in SDK, you don't even need to write any code. Let me show you how. First, let's get the client ID for our project. You can get this by looking into your project's Google Services info.plist file or look it up on the Google Cloud Console. Remember, every Firebase project is also a Google Cloud project, so you can see all your project's details by visiting the Google Cloud Console. To get the client ID for your project, go to the Google Cloud Console at console.cloud.google.com, then find APIs and Services in the navigation bar on the left. On the Fly Out menu, select Credentials to see all API keys and OAuth client IDs for your project. You should now see an OAuth2 client ID for your iOS project. Its name should start with iOS client and the bundle ID of your iOS app. Click on this item to see its details. In the next screen, you will see the client ID and the iOS URL scheme for this OAuth client ID. Copy the client ID. Alternatively, if you don't want to use the Google Cloud Console, you can just open your project's Google Services info.plist file. The client ID and the reverse client ID are at the very top of the file. In the next step, we will add this client ID to our app's target properties. First, Select the project's target in the project configuration. Then hover over the custom target properties table and click one of the little plus icons. This will insert a new key. Name the key GID client ID, make sure the type is set to string, and then paste the client ID into the value column. If you don't want to use this approach, you can also configure the Google Sign-in Client SDK programmatically. Let's first import the Google Sign-in module so we can use it in our view model. Next, we will fetch the client ID from the project's Google Services info.plist file. But instead of reading the file directly, we can use the options object on the Firebase app instance. This is populated when you call Firebase app.configure at application startup. After reading the client ID, we create a GID configuration object and configure the shared GID sign-in instance with it. The Google Sign-in Client SDK will always try to read the property from your app's target properties first, and then override it with any programmatic configuration you might be using. To help Google Sign-in to present its sign-in flow correctly, we also need to provide a reference to the presenting view controller. This is particularly important on devices with a larger screen. You will want to make sure the sign-in dialog appears in the center of the screen and not somewhere tucked away in a sidebar. Now that we've got everything in place, we can invoke the sign-in flow by calling gid sign-in. When I open the code completion for the sign-in method, I can see all the available overloads. The first ones all require me to implement a completion handler, as we can see by looking at their signature. And these other ones here allow me to use async await to call them, which will make my code look a lot nicer. So let me call this method and pass in the root view controller. And now I will try to assign the result of this method call to a local variable. I will use try await since I want to call this method asynchronously. But there is a warning, which tells me that this method needs to be called from an asynchronous context. When I click on the error message, Xcode offers two different fixes for this. Since I am interested in getting the return value of this call, I will pick this first one here, which adds the async keyword to the function signature. And now I need to wrap the call in a do catch block to properly handle any errors. Unfortunately, Xcode doesn't have a quick fix for this, so I'll have to implement this manually. If an error is thrown, we will return false. Otherwise, we will return true. So this was the first step. In the next step, we will extract the ID token and the access token from the result of this call. If there is no ID token, we will throw an error. And now, let's use the Google Auth provider to create a credential object from the ID token and the access token. And finally, we can use this credential object to sign into Firebase. 
the auth object has a method sign in with credential that takes our credential and returns a Firebase user. Since this is a server call, we need to call this function asynchronously using try await. Let's extract the user from the result and then print a little log message. Sweet. We are now ready to run the application. I'll be using a demo account that has two-factor authentication enabled to provide that extra layer of security. So here I am in the application, and I am not yet signed in. I open the sign-in dialog, and here is the sign-in button. All right, let me tap on it to trigger the sign-in flow. iOS will show this alert to let the user know that we're now about to use a third party to sign in. Once I tap on Continue, the Google sign-in dialog will appear, and you will notice that this is actually running in the web browser. I can now type in the credentials for the Google account I want to sign in with. Since this user has 2FA enabled, I will now be given a number of options to receive the second factor, for example, by using an authenticator app like Google Authenticator or receiving a one-time code by SMS. When running this on a physical device, the verification code by SMS is the smoothest option, as iOS will offer to autofill the code for me once it has arrived in a Messages app. And voila, I am signed in. In the previous video, I showed you how to make sure the app retains its authentication state across launches by registering an authentication state listener. And as expected, this works for any authentication provider. So if I quit the app and then launch it again, I am still signed in using my Google account. Signing the user out works just like for all the other Firebase authentication providers. A call to auth.signout is all that it takes to sign the user out locally. Firebase will remove the cached ID token from the keychain, so the next time the user starts the app, they will have to sign in again. Keep in mind that you will have to reset your app into an unauthorized state after a call to sign out. The easiest way to do this is to use the authentication state listener and reset the UI when you receive nil as the user. As you can see in my implementation, it will reset the UI and authentication state when it receives nil. And there you have it. Your users can now sign into your app using Google Sign-In. In my opinion, Federated identity providers like Google Sign-In and Sign-In with Apple are a much better option than signing in with email and password. From the user's perspective, it is so much more convenient. You don't have to come up with a new and strong enough password. And since most of the providers remember your username, you don't even have to type in your email address all of the time. Another benefit is that most federated identity providers support second-factor authentication, which adds an extra layer of protection for your users. So happy faces all around. As mentioned earlier, the sample app is available on our GitHub repository, and the link is in the description below. Hey, and if this video helped you, I'd love it if you could give me a thumbs up so I know you'd like to see more content like this. Also. Be sure to check out the Firebase Fundamentals playlist, as we've got a bunch of other videos about Firebase Auth and all the other Firebase features coming up. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.